everybody. I'm Elias. I'm originally from Sao Paulo, Brazil, but I'm currently leaving in Antofagasta, Chile. And uh, I do have a gaming channel, and I used to have a political channel. And because of that, because of, you know, I'm part of both worlds, I'm doing a rebuttal of a journalistic piece from a reporter named Amy Coles. Don't worry, this won't be a rampart. This won't be a nervous uh, ra uh, rampant of an old man like doing an angry review or an angry rebuttal or anything like that. It will be respectful and it will be based upon facts, okay? And uh, it will be an educated re uh, rebuttal. I hope she understands because I do know where she's coming from and I understand some of her points. I don't disagree with her journalistic piece uh, totally, but in some points I do disagree and I'd like to put it out there because as a man, as a conservative and as a gamer, I do have the right to have a voice and an opinion and I hope this voice and this opinion do match many other gamers male and conservative men around the world. So please do give me an eye. Please do give me a chance to, you know, make a, an educated and calm rebuttal point to point about her journalistic piece, okay? Please enjoy the video. Uh, Amy Coles, she starts. The rampant body shaming of Abby in The Last of Us Part Two shows gamers who still can't accept a realistic female lead. Okay, in this first part, uh, first, you're talking about gamers you know, on a general manner. That's not right, okay? You cannot re re represent a few angry reviews, a few angry people to represent, to represent all of us. I don't have any sort of problem with, uh, a with Abby whatsoever especially to her build, her body, anything like that. As a matter of fact, the times uh, where presence or her presence is known in the game where we play as Abby, she's much, much better than Ali because she's taller, she's buffed, she's strong, she can put up a fight, she's a trained soldier, and uh, it is incredible to play with her. The problem goes way beyond what you're, you know, putting on the surface. It's much deeper than that. The reason why majority of the gamers do not like Abby. And it's not the character's fault. It's not Abby's fault that we don't like her. It's the way she was written. It, it was the way that her story was written and the forced uh, agenda they did put behind her. Like, they even got to the point where they made Abby play with dogs and uh, we would enjoy play with dogs as Abby and had her, her daddy even save a zebra from uh, a barbed wire and things like that to make us love Abby and hate Allie by making Allie cute doggies in the game. <clears throat> so it was forced down our throats. And uh, no matter what Joel did in the past to save Ali's life, we love him for that. Uh, Joel represents us. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Joel lost a baby daughter tragically in the past. So he got a second chance to have a baby daughter again. And he wouldn't let it go. I wouldn't either. And that doesn't make me a monster. And if I had to kill everybody on the facility to, you know, make it happen, so be it. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm sorry, actually. I'm not saying I'm sorry uh, to my opinion whatsoever, because as a matter of fact, I would do just the same thing that Joel did. Uh, did. And everybody else would, too, to protect her baby girl, his baby girl. You see where we're coming from? You were once a daughter or you're a daughter still of a father. Hopefully he protected you from everything that was uh, thrown towards your way, trying to do you harm, Amy. So as a daddy of a daughter, 
I would do the same to save my baby girl. So that uh, and not all gamers are represented by a few angry idiots that make you know those sort of a uh, uh, death threats and harassment, this sort of uh, stuff that the uh, voice actor were getting. It's so bad now that even the character's voice actor has received death threats. Will gamers ever come to any deviation from uh, the sexualized perfect female character we normally get? Okay. Yes, indeed, it is pretty bad that some idiots out there are sending death threats to the voice actor. That's ridiculous. It's just a game. And uh, of course, we do enjoy playing as those characters and we have a lot of fun. But there are people that are mentally ill to send death threats to a voice actor that has nothing to do with the script whatsoever. So that's ridiculous. Just putting out there, those kind of people should be in jail by death rat in a woman. Okay? So, just putting out there, please do not put us on the same basket of, of this kind of people. All the men, okay? That's a mistake, and I'm sorry, you're making that mistake. This video is going to be long, okay? So, bear with me in this one. The independent employees, reporters around the world, okay, uh, I'm a Nabi Stan. That statement alone is one of the most controversial among gamers like, uh, right now after the release of The Last of Us Part Two, The much hyped sequel of two, uh, 2013's Runaway hit The Last of Us. <clears throat> and the most divisive gaming uh, release thus far in this year. Like, uh, like its predecessor, the game has been lauded and a critical darling and broke multiple uh, sales records since its 19 June release in, on PS4. Okay, uh, so yes, the game has sold a lot thus far and uh, we've been getting mixed reviews, angry ones, calmer ones, great reviews from critics and bad reviews from the people. But why? Why this is happening? It's not because it's a totally bad game. Technically, the game is great. Uh, for you to play this game, it's really amazing. It plays really well. The graphics are amazing. The technical part of the game, it's just fun. It's there. It's the last of us as we expected. But unfortunately, the other major part of the game that was the storytelling, it was poorly written. It was hushed. The way that Joel was killed was hushed. And uh, the way that Abby was presented was pretty hushed. And made us not care for her whatsoever. We should have been presented with her reasons beforehand in order for us to start understanding the reasons behind what she did. But no, it was, you know, throwing down her gullets. Uh, it was thrown down her gullets that she was killing Joel, or father figure in the game, with a golf club after torturing him for several hours or minutes. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. But she tortured him for a long, long time. And it was hushed. She should have been, you know, inside, uh, uh, inside of Jacksonville for a while, like staying with Joel or be saved by Allie and then finding out that Joel was her father figure and then, you know, putting her revenge of, above all else. Or even, you know, uh, Allie starts suspecting because of some talks or any sort of shit. She should have done, so, and they should have done something um, on the storytelling. On the storytelling, it's pretty bad. Unfortunately, it's pretty, pretty bad, the storytelling. The way that the story was presented to the public in general, it made us even angry with the writer because he was just getting the characters that we found love for, we grown to love throughout all those years that are Joe and Nelly. It made them become evil. Uh, they, they went so far on Naughty Dog on putting them as evil that us as Abby 
we were attacking and had Ali as a boss fight. Okay, you just don't do that to the fans. And uh, the many times everybody allowed Abby to die on Ali's hands or killed Abby on purpose on the game because we wanted her to fail so bad on her mission. But what what happened just happened, and that's one point. But its hype has been overshadowed by a loud and determinedly uh, misogynistic, misogynistic some uh, consumers. Their target, Abby, a new antagonist turned heroine and playable character who sport uh, who sports a muscled and stocky physique to rival the toughest man in the game. Well, I'm sorry, darling. Uh, let's get to the point here. Playing as Abby, technically, it was awesome. If the character was well written, not poorly written as she was, playing as Abby is a lot of fun. She's tough, she's strong, we do love playing as her because she, she's capable. He, she just knows. She's perfect fit to, this, um, to the world that they were presenting. A capable woman, strong, built, able to even, uh, you know, go uh, toe by toe uh, with some men, not all men, because she, if she could, you know, take all men out, she would have killed uh, Joel and Tommy uh, on her own. She would have done it on her own, but she wasn't able to do so. Joel saved her, okay, saved her bacon big time. She was supposed to get killed, but, you know, uh, Joel saved her bacon. So there's no way whatsoever she's stronger than all the men. And I'm sorry, on, bi on biology, even the strongest of the women, uh, even the strongest, the strongest one, are not as strong as men. I'm sorry. Of course, not all men are strong, but take uh, take me as an example. I'm a six foot eight guy, a hundred uh, more than uh, two hundred and seventy pounds. I'm a pretty tough guy. I have like uh, twenty seven inches arms. I'm pretty tall. I'm tough. I'm a tough guy. I used to be in the army. I know how to fight. You can bring me the toughest woman ever and she wouldn't be able to put up a fight with me. Not even professionals, I'm sorry. I'm just that good on a, of a fighter and uh, I'm pretty tall and uh, pretty tough. No women whatsoever would be able to take me on in a fight. Uh, and that's just a reality. It, it's not because, it, you know, I'm saying that every woman are weak. I do believe there are some pretty tough women out there, okay? But they wouldn't be able to put up a, a fight with me. Maybe now that I'm 43 years old and much older, okay, maybe, maybe so. But normally, they wouldn't be able to put up a fight with me. I'm taking me as an example. I used to fight Krav Maga in the army, and I'm pretty good at it. And I fought guys that are even taller than me. I've fought a Israeli guy 7.4 feet tall. A guy really tough as well. And I fought him and I beat him. I won the fight. So even the strongest women wouldn't be able to put up a fight with me. I'm sorry. It's just biology. It's not that I'm a superhuman or a superman. It's just biology. Biology as it is. Okay, uh, it's just playing with reality here, okay? Uh, I'm not trying to be any superhero or anything like that. Early spoilers leaked online back in April and made Abby an instant target. Especially when it was released, gamers would uh, spend half of the 20 plus hours of gameplay as her and not as much as adored Ally. Yes, that's true, that's true. Uh, unfortunately for us players, uh, Abby was, you know, pushed down her gullets, forcing us to try and like her, and unfortunately it didn't work. It didn't work whatsoever. Oh, but Elias, the game sold millions and millions of copies, and it broke records. Okay, so does cocaine. 
So does crack cocaine. It sells millions and millions of dollars every year. It breaks records of sales every year, but it doesn't mean it's good. Opioids, they sell millions of dollars every year. They're record sales, but it doesn't mean it's good. So I'm sorry that the numbers of sales on The Last of Us Part Two, at least for me, they don't mean anything at all. But they, uh, because it, they don't. Cocaine sells a lot, but it doesn't mean it's good. Crack cocaine sells a lot, but it doesn't mean it's good. Marijuana sells a lot, but it doesn't mean it's good. It, it's just my point, okay? This hate was only compound when it became clear that Abby would be responsible for the death of a major character just a few hours in the game. But rather, vent of valid frustrations over the plot and uh, some mechanics of the game, like some players a toxic subset uh, have floor, uh, flooded with the internet with rampant body shaming uh, and sexist comments about Abby's appearance. Look, please do not put all men in the same basket as those idiots. I don't have any problem whatsoever with uh, how Abby is built. I think she's perfect, and I do find uh, find it plausible that she uh, she is you know a tough lady and a strong woman, because she was uh, she was inside the fireflies, she would be able to uh, to build muscles because they had gyms, they had food supplies, they had everything that was necessary in order for uh, a woman to get built, uh, maybe even got some you know those. Uh, feeding supl uh, supplement supplements, they got those uh, uh, steroids or something like that for her to become a Hulk-sized woman, and maybe it was just her build. Even when she was thinner, when she was younger, she was already a tall girl in the game. She was already kind of built. Her biology was pretty good. Her genes were pretty good to build muscles. So yes, it is plausible. It is plausible. I've seen some tough women around. I've seen some really big muscular women around and it's okay. Please do not put all men on the same basket because if you do so, it, it gives us men the right to put all the women on the same basket as some murderous bitches out there that kill their own sons, their own fathers, their own husbands. And not all women are the same. Not all women are the same. So, Please do not put all the men on the same basket of those idiots. We are not the same, and we don't agree with them whatsoever. Okay, so please do not make it general when it's not. Call them, call them by their names, okay? Please do not put all men on the same basket. That's all I'm asking. People have suggested that real women could never look like Abby, when in fact her body is based on the of a, the real life CrossFit Games athlete Colin Foch. That is impossible to bulk up in a post apocalyptic world, and that she must be a transgender, which she isn't. Okay, uh, again, don't put all men on the same basket. I never thought that Abby was a transgender. Uh, I do found uh, her pretty built in, in an incredible woman. I do found a uh, find her even beautiful. I really enjoy looking at her. She's a night candy for me. It, it, it is my taste. A built woman. It, it's kind of my taste. Okay, uh, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed uh, you know seeing her and everything. Of course, I do understand where some men come from. They don't like built women because, you know, you feel the muscles. You kind of remind me, uh, remind those other men of men because uh, it's not usual to have women built like a man. Pretty strong, pretty tough. I do understand that he, he, it's not the taste of some men. Me, well, I don't actually have a problem with built women. I find it attractive. Not pretty built like a Hulk build, but a Zabby, yeah, I find it cool. I find it cool. I have no problem whatsoever with that. And uh, that, that's just my opinion. So please, again, do not put all men on the same basket that some idiots out there. 
That's just what I'm asking of you. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, transphobic and misogynistic. Okay. The game itself has been targeted by a mass negative user reviews obsessing on Abby's off-putting meaningless. All the toxicity uh, has once again shown how gaming audiences still can't handle realistic female bodies. Okay. Um, first, do not put all men on the same basket as those idiots out there. Once again, you're generalizing. That's stupid. I'm not calling you stupid. I'm saying that generalizing people or a group of people based on some, it's a stupid, okay? And, and it shouldn't be done. It's not realistic whatsoever because not all women are able to get built as Abby. And she's an exception. She's not, uh, she's not the uh, main rule. She's not the mainstream here. Abby is just, as a matter of fact, uh, kind of a, how can I put it? Abby is, is the exception. She's not the, the rule. She's not the main road here. Okay. So to have a built woman like Abby is not normal. Even Nadine on The Last of Us Part One, she was pretty tough. She was a tough woman. Do you guys remember Nadine from The Last of Us Part One? She's tough. And we we are uh, you know used to female leaders. Another example: uh, the African women that I forgot the name right now on the Uncharted Four. Well, wow, that was Nadine, right? Yeah, that was Nadine. I'm sorry. So I made a mistake here uh, on both women because uh, they are both had roles on Uncharted and The Last of Us games, both Naughty Dog games, and may have made a confusion. But you, you, you see my point here. The women, uh, the black women from The Last of Us Part One. She was pretty tough, pretty strong, strong. The African woman from Uncharted 4, she was pretty tough, a strong woman. Uh, Lara Croft was pretty tough and a strong woman. So we are we are used to, you know, female leaders. Well, we don't have any problems with that. And my mom was a female leader, a quite good one, actually, so... I do have a history of strong female leaders in my family. I had great examples of women that are, you know, strong and leaders. So, I don't know where you're coming from exactly. Maybe from those idiots out there. So, don't put all men on the same basket, please. Again. With Abby, the developers of Naughty Dog had deviated from the bar uh, barbaresque body type, big breasts, narrow waist, and minimal muscle, given to popular characters, most infamous like Tomb Raider, Lara Croft. Well, she's not like that uh, anymore. She isn't sexualized at the expense of the plot. Lara Croft does not sexualize on the expense of the plot whatsoever. Which is so refer uh, refreshing to see. Maybe for you, we've we've seen it before. Even playing as Abby is refreshing. Indeed, it is. Uh, it is. It is pretty good to play as Abby. Further, the punch harder than Ali uh, and the other playable characters, who is of slight uh, slight build. Yes, it is true. It is true. It is pretty good to play a Zabby. It makes you feel powerful because she is powerful and she deserves to be powerful. She's a trained soldier and she's tough. And I like that. She put, she put up some working hours on those muscles and she deserved it. I think she deserved it. She deserved it uh, pretty good. Uh, but she deserved better written as well. She, she deserved to be better written as well. I could have done a much better job than uh, the director of The Last of Us, as uh, better than New Druckmann, I guarantee you guys. As a female gamer, Abby's phys uh, physicality is a rare treat, and it makes sense in its post-apocalyptical setting where 
Much of the humanity has turned into fungus infected zombies with a taste for blood. There, uh, there has, however, been some pushbacks with women sharing images of their muscles online alongside screenshots of Abby, challenging those who ever said that her body isn't realistic. That I agree with. I've seen some built women like Abby. It's not uh, the mainstream. It's really rare to see women as built as Abby, but it's pretty cool to see. I really do enjoy it. And uh, on that part, I totally agree with you. Still, the whole thing raises questions of whether these gamers will ever welcome any deviation from the sexualized, perfect female characters we are normally given. Please do not put all men and all gamers on the same basket as a few idiots out there. We do enjoy strong female characters as long as their story is well written. And that's it, okay? Uh, for decades, those sexualized representations of women in games have been excused by the ridiculous claim that women don't play action-adventure games. That's not it whatsoever. That's not it whatsoever. It's just that on the early 80s and the late 90s, men were majority of the uh, video game players. In my household, I can tell that I'm the, uh, me and my son, we are the only ones that are interested in video games. My daughter can barely touch the video games, and that's not because I don't allow her to do so. Uh, my daughter even has an account on my PlayStation 4, but she barely uses it, even when the video game is out there and nobody's using it. She's just not interested in those games whatsoever. She prefers to play with her doll. She prefers to, you know, doing her mathematical exercises because she's a... Uh, they're pretty good at it. She prefers drawing. She prefers painting. Uh, she prefers, you know, role playing or practicing martial arts, that sort of stuff. My daughter just doesn't enjoy playing video games. My wife, uh, she enjoy plays some video games if it is car crash based or car racing, that sort of stuff, or even a street fighter. But that's it. And my wife doesn't enjoy playing that much video games. Not as much as I do. Actually, not many people enjoy playing video games as much as I do. I play since I was five years old for over 38 years now. So, I'm a seasoned player. It has given the power to a toxic subculture of straight, white, male gamers who feel the industry and they're uh, in there and the only way they should be uh, created to while attempts to include Include LGBT female or BAME representations are often seen as agenda-driven attempts to uh, oust them altogether. Well, here first you're being racist. Uh, not all men, not all white men are like that. We do not share that same uh, opinion as you. Uh, we do not share the same opinion of those idiots out there. You're putting all white men in the basket. And uh, watch the review of Lucas. The Last of Us Part II discourse is totally depressing and risks harming the progress being made by gamers like this. Thankfully, writer and creative director New Druckmann is one of the many calling out the toxic backlash. It's ironic or maybe sad. I think the people who will benefit the most from this kind of story are the ones that are yelling the loudest right now, he said in an interview with the games industry biz. But I hope there's enough in the game to draw them in, and it's just normalized stuff that is normal. I'm sorry, no Druckmann. Not all things that you display on your game are normal. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm not talking about the lesbian couple. And I'm not talking about the transgender uh, Chinese girl that become uh, that became a boy, okay? We are not talking about that. Some things, for an example, why did you have to make Ali a pot smoker? Why? Not all youth smoke pot. Not all youth 
do drugs. There's no reason whatsoever for Ali to have become a pot user. Why do you picture Ali as doing drugs? If Ali were to be raised by a conservative man, uh, and especially a Christian man that talks about God, such as Joel, in her former later years of her life, she wouldn't be doing drugs. I'm sorry. She had uh, a tough youth, tough, uh, you know, years in, on the beginning of her life. But she did found Joel. And Joel was a pretty cool dad figure for her. Not her original dad, but much, much better than many dads that we've seen around uh, the world, you know. With, with the astronaut thing and all the things that he risked and have done for her. So there's no reason whatsoever for you to picture uh, Allie as a pot user and a drug addict as you pictured her. Okay, so that's not cool whatsoever. That was unnecessary. But, uh, and it's not normal. Not all youth do drugs. Not all youth smoke pot. Hopefully, developers uh, and the industry will continue to resist this sexist narrative and make strides to give us more realistic, realistic female leads. Because ultimately, girls who play games aren't a myth. We both want and deserve to see better. Okay, uh, girls doesn't have as much representation on the game industry as men for the simple fact that on the majority of the people who play, buy, and spend tons and tons of money on games, on gamer uh, consumption such as video game consoles, special controllers, uh, live passes, you know, all that sort of stuff that we buy for video games, special televisions, television sets, the special sound sets, the, all that sort of stuff. Men are just 92% of the market. So women are just 8% of the market. That's why you girls have lesser share as a representation. Because games are still for boys. Of course, we're not saying and we're not, you know, talking about men only games. But uh, please do have in mind that we are majority of the buyers, okay? That's my rebuttal. Please don't take it hard. Uh, I did, uh, you know, as educated as I could. And I just hope that you understand my point of view as well. Thank you. Bye.